Good morning and welcome to the Morning Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Cam, coming to you as always from the Spotlight Studios here in Morristown, New Jersey. My guest today is the co-managing partner of Riker Danzig in Morristown, New Jersey, right where we are. We're in the same town. He provides a range of commercial litigation services to clients, particularly title insurance companies and financial institutions. He's represented every major title insurer as well as their insured. Best Lawyers in America, a peer review of U.S. lawyers, has included been on its best lawyers list in the fields of commercial litigation and banking litigation since 2007. And Thompson Reuters has included him on New Jersey's super lawyers list for business litigation since 2011. He is Mike O'Donnell. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um... It's good to talk to another person from Mars. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we're, I mean, not only are our offices, I'm putting my office in extreme air quotes, uh, we live like right around the corner from each other. We, 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 we did not plan this out as well as we possibly could, but we could, we could have done this in person, but it's always great to talk to you. Always good to have you. I'm really excited yeah. to get you on the show finally, because we've been working on trying to get you on here. I feel like since January. Or we could have done it at the Grasshopper or the Dublin Pub. I feel like that would have been better. even better. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not my apartment. I, I could promise you that. But um, all right. So you're actually, you know, like, so obviously I am the coolest guy in title insurance. You're probably top 10, 20, you I'm, know, I'm the uncoolest guy. <laughs> in title. I'm uh, as stiff as a board. <laughs> just ask my wife. <laughs> but um, uh, definitely not true because I know you. But one of the things that I think is interesting is we've only had uh, you're now the second person, I think, coming from, I mean, obviously you're an attorney, we laid that out in your bio, but coming from the title world. So we had Gary Ham, my dad, you know him. Uh, he was on yep. the show earlier this year. Um, and now you're on the show. So surprisingly on, uh, you know, we've uh, to date posted 117 episodes and this is only the second time that we've kind of had somebody from my world of title insurance on this show. Um, so, you know, how did you get started in the title insurance world? Because I tell people all the time that are unfamiliar with it, that it's not necessarily the sexiest subject in real estate, but it's an important part. So how'd you kind of get started in that part of your, uh, you know, law practice? Well, you know, I, I got started pretty much. You sort of follow where the business is. Yeah. And I grad I graduated law school in 88 and came to Riker in 89, in the middle of the thrift crisis. And I spent six, seven, eight years litigating mortgage fraud cases, banking litigation, fraudulent conveyances. I still do a lot of that work as yeah, well. Right. And then the economy got a little bit better. And where's the next font for litigation involving fraud and other, you know, fun stuff? Real estate. Yeah. And one of my uh, partners, Vince Sharkey, um, had a very good relationship with uh, Chicago Title and had done work with them for years. So in 96 or 97, um, I started doing title insurance cases. And I think one of my first cases was tracing title back to 1812 <laughs> down, in, down in Cape May County. And we uh, had actually had a, a, a three-day bench trial. Yeah. But since then, um, like you said in, in your gracious introduction to me, you know, we've been able to develop and we've done work for um, just about in any gambit of the, of the industry from, you know, the pure dirt litigation to class actions. Yeah. And it's It's been great. And, and I will say as an aside, um, although my wife only worked two to three years for the American Land Title Association, I met her dating in D.C. when she was working for the Alta. So I also owe... 30 years of marriage to the wow. title insurance. There you go. I always joke about yeah. More than 30. Right, right, right. I always joke about it too, like when, you know, people talk about title insurance and the conventions, because the title insurance conventions, whether they were Alta conventions or New Jersey Land Title Association conventions, those were like my childhood, you know, vacations when I was a kid. Like that's where our family vacation was to Cooperstown or to wherever, you know, like wherever the title convention was held that year, that's where we would go. Hershey Park, wherever. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of fond memories of title insurance, even before I even knew exactly what it was. So um, did you, I, I, I don't think this, this happened, but did you go to law school right after college or did you have a, like a period of time where you did something else? No, I, I, um, I went to, um, I went to, um, College at God's University. And for your listeners who don't know that, that's the University of Notre Dame. Right. Um, and then I went there on a Marine Corps scholarship. 
and I did five years in the Marines. And then I came out and um, I went to the University of Virginia Law School. And then I clerked for a year in D.C. where I met my wife. Right. And then I, then I came home to New Jersey. Gotcha. I knew there was a gap there. I knew, but I just didn't know exactly what it was. So what was the Marine Corps life like? It, it was um, it was great. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, if I look back on it, if if I had started, it sounds sort of strange, but um, my first tour after the basic school and, and my, I was a ground supply officer. I, I was not, you know, um, um, that glamorous of a, of a, of a position in the Marines, but I was still a Marine yeah. and that's, um, I went to, um, Newport beach, California, which was really tough duty. But my last year I was in Okinawa and Korea on deployments. And honestly, if I had done my last year first, I probably would have, um, made it a career because yeah. I loved it. And I still loved it. I got out because one, I thought nothing was going to happen. And two, I thought, Oh my God, if I do 20 years, I'll get out and I'll be 42 years old and my life will be over. So <laughs> I wasn't too good in career planning at that stage. Of my life. <laughs> Few people are, I feel like that early in life. Right. Yeah. Right. But um, I mean, I'm 31 and we're still trying to, you know, figure it out a little bit. But um, so then, so you go to law school. Do you think, I mean, I don't know a ton of attorneys that have gone, and I know a decent amount just from work and my dad and wherever that have gone from the military side into law school. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know more. But do you think that like that kind of, um, maybe regiment mindset, that type of thing has kind of been like kind of set you up for the success that you've had over the course of your career as an attorney. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, particularly in Marine we say once a Marine, always, a Marine. there's no such thing as a former Marine. Right. You know, I remember when I, my first day in law school, um, literally I was, um, maybe, a, maybe a week and a half out of the service, two weeks back from Korea. Yeah. And when the professors walked in, I thought I was going to have to jump to attention, you know, because that, that's right. the type of training you have. But, you know, it absolutely trains you and, and gives you some perspective. I mean, yeah. you you hear a lot of lawyers talking about, you know, being tough, and et cetera. And the reality of it is, look, there were individuals, one colonel in particular, who landed his helicopter in a minefield in Vietnam and his crew chief ran out the mine film brought in four Marines. That crew chief got the Medal of Honor. Yeah. And the the colonel got the Navy Cross, which is the second highest award for Gallagher, Gal Valor. Those guys are the tough guys. Right. Would we That's deal pretty with tough. Money? I wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we deal with money and resolving property lines and 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 issues. So yeah. when people get all excited and scream and yell, you know, because because basically not because I'm that guy, but I've been around guys like sure, that. Right. You have a different perspective. Yeah, exactly. You, your your mindset shifts a little bit because you could see, you know, the people that just thump their chest and the people that actually that that actually do it. So, um, are are you from New Jersey originally? I, I don't think I know. Yeah, I'm from Monmouth County. I'm okay. from Hazlitt, New Jersey. So, and in, in fact, um, I tried a case, and um, last year, and one of my counsels said. When you say see caucus, there's no doubt where you're from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could hear it. Um, but uh, but so I, I think that's also interesting because then you you come back home, right, to New Jersey, Monmouth County, Morris County, a little bit different. But um, so then when you start at Riker, I mean, obviously Riker has been around for a very long time. Um, it's a firm that obviously has a lot of uh, prestige. It has a lot of history. Um, so talk to me about that. So you've been with Riker, I think you said since like 89, is that what you said? In 1989. 1989. So, so like, what was that like? Yeah. 32 years yeah. um, going on 33. It, it's been, it's been great. Yeah. I mean, this firm is, is unbelievably collegial. We've got great attorneys. The work has been fascinating. And I will say, you know, one of the things that, that was different about Riker, when I came to Riker, I came to chose Riker because I wanted to get courtroom experience and I didn't want to be in New York, you know, stuck reviewing documents for five, six years, which is not entirely true. People right. get experience in New York. Yeah. But three, four years later, after I had my first child, I realized really one of the benefits of coming to Riker Danzig is that we were able to do top quality legal work. And I was able to, you know, actually 
see my kids grow up yeah. and, and be at things that, um, that it wouldn't have been if, if I was at the city. That doesn't mean that I didn't go when my daughter was playing Cleopatra in the third grade, you know, watch the play and then right. end up working from eight o'clock at night. Yeah. But I can do things like that. Yeah. And the, the firm has always been good, a good balance of family and professional work that challenging and interesting. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but Riker pretty much covers like, I mean, just about every, you know, practice area that you could cover as a law firm, right? Sure. I mean, it's, it's we're, a full we're, service firm. Yeah, we're a general practice firm. There are yeah. some areas that, that 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 maybe you go elsewhere, but basically, you know, New Jersey, we cover the waterfront. Yeah. And then, so I think also what is interesting is that when you start, was there a reason why, you know, because as a title insurance sales rep, I don't necessarily work with guys like yourself. I work more with like the transactional team, like the guys that are doing like the actual transactional work, because a lot of my stuff is on the front end. A lot of your stuff is on the back end. And I think what's interesting is that like, you know, not everybody likes to go into the litigation side. More people like some people like to go on to the transactional side. So what was the draw for you to go into litigation kind of like right when you started? Well, again, this, it kind of goes back to my experience in the Marines. Yeah. I, I decided when the Marines, cause I, 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 when I initially went in, I didn't want to make it a career and I wanted to get some business experience. So I chose being a ground supply officer. That was, you know, I did it. It was great, but the infantry is the king in the Marines. Yeah. And if I had to do it again, I would have been an infantry officer. Right. So when I came out to law school, I looked and I said, what's the king of the legal world? It's litigation. Yeah. You don't see too many TV shows about tax lawyers <laughs> or estate lawyers. Of course, no offense. It's all about no offense trial. to throw into tax and estate lawyers. Or, of course. Or even or even God forbid real estate lawyers. <laughs> it's yeah. about litigating. Right. So I said, I'm gonna be with the cutting edge. And yeah. I know I'm completely and totally biased and wrong about that, but well, that's that's why I chose. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. Cause you like, you want to be out there, you know, like, and, and doing stuff like that. So, um, in your experiences, I mean, what are some things that you kind of like, maybe as you started out, I know you said like, uh, banking and, and that type of litigation work, and then eventually got more into the title side and doing title litigation work. I mean, as your career has progressed and obviously it's spanned, you know, about almost 32 years, you said going or 32 years going on 33 years at this point at one firm, kind of watching the expansion of, I'm sure the firm, but just the, the different things that now you have to, to deal with, like, you know, the, the way that cases are, you know, are there, are there instances where like the cases that maybe you were working back in 97 in the title insurance side are a lot different than maybe some of the cases that you have to work now, or are those things pretty much still the same? Well, they are pretty much the same. Uh, you know, the, the one thing that that's that, you know, there's always new avenues for fraud. Yeah. And new. Um, and one thing that, that did not exist when I started is wire fraud. Right. Which and that's thing, now. Yeah. yeah. That I mean, we see a wire fraud almost every day. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 a huge, huge issue, you know, and obviously with with the Internet. Um, the ability to 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 fraud in that regard is obviously a big issue. Some of the more old school fraud is a little bit more difficult, a little bit easier to catch. Like I, I did an asset based lending case with a shoe company where the accountants were um, accounting the inventory, and um, once they got through one sh one store. They'd call to the next door and they'd, they'd, they'd hustle the shoes from the ultra to, to right. that store. Yeah. They pulled all that off. Yeah. And, and a lot of our technology has has eliminated a lot of the more simplistic fraud. Right. But people are always, they're always clever and, and they always, you know, they always find ways to um, to work to work around the system. So yeah. I, I think that's. It, it's really the technology that, that that's changed everything, and, yeah. and in some ways, it's changed it's changed things for the for the for the better. I mean, sure. when we started, we would be put into trailers or rooms with hundreds of thousands of documents, and you'd have to um, review all of them, log them, spot them, and then create a memo 
and then make sure you pull that 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 document out of the particular file. Now, I mean, we you know it, it's all electronic. We can just keyword search. You know, once we do our first review, um, it's you know it we know what we're looking for. It's so much more efficient, and, and so actually so much more better for the client. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, the the efficiency is obviously there, but then obviously it creates a lot of you know potential pitfalls because, like you said, I mean, wire fraud is a huge thing now. I mean, we have to send out wire instructions constantly just to make sure that people know, like, hey, if it doesn't come from this and if it doesn't look like this, you know, don't send it. Um, but but yeah, that's that's definitely something. Um, but uh, but also, I, I was curious as you were kind of going through that story with like the shoe company. And, you know, I mean, again, if you can't really get into too much specifics, but what's been the most like, like just ridiculous thing that you've had to to litigate? Like, like, can you believe they got they did this type of thing? Well, um, you know, the 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 most ridiculous thing as far as um, maybe loan underwriting is we had a case that was a thirty one million dollar fraud. Eight loans, um, and the lo- the properties were actually bought, but they did you know double closing. Wonder where they bought the properties for two and a half million, and then they they um, sold them for five million. Yeah, and they were paying the straw borrowers fifty grand a pop, and they got caught because one of the straw borrowers um, wanted a hundred grand, and he and they wouldn't pay that, and he then he exposed them. It was a good thing for the very affluent town that um, he was um, going to buy a house in. Yeah. That they exposed him because he was going to um, open a gangster porn stu- studio. Okay. In this $4 million <laughs> house, $5 million house. All right. Yeah. But when we got into it, we found that the fraudsters were able to go to a guy in Jersey City for 500 bucks and get W-2s bank statements, um, anything you would need to process a loan. Yeah. But it was so slipshod. I mean, the bank statements had headers, Jesus saves. These were, you know, in some of these, they were getting mortgages and they, and they were mortgages on the properties. And if you looked at the bank statement, there wasn't one mortgage payment. Yeah. So I've seen some pretty, pretty slipshod issues with, in, in regard to that, I, you know, we, we, we just, it's just, you see it every day, yeah. you know, um, and it's amazing, you know, so how could someone fall for that? And the simple thing is, um, you make it a loan, you're going to get a commission, you know, um, you go for it. You're yeah. a hard money lender, you're getting 14% interest, 15% interest, what could go wrong? Exactly. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Until it goes wrong. Yeah, until it goes wrong. Right, exactly. And then Michael Donald's knocking on your door. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Um, But so from like some of those things, I I think are they're obviously very interesting. They're very, you know, exciting, I feel like, to kind of like uncover some of those things and kind of work to get that case solved. From the title insurance side sometimes, because we were joking before about like, you know, sometimes you're litigating like property lines, you know, does it like, I mean, I'm sure it's a balance, but when you have, you know, your new uh, attorneys coming to the firm, because I'm sure you do almost every year, I mean, I would right. imagine, um, and trying to compel some of them to come into maybe your side of the firm, like the title insurance litigation side, which is not, like we said before, title insurance in and of itself, it may not be the most exciting thing, but how uh, do you find it difficult to maybe kind of uh, convince or attract people in that field? Maybe they want to go do some other type of litigation work. Um, what's that, what's that process like? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's varied, yeah. right? The, the, the case I was talking to you about with the underwriting, that was a title insurance case. Okay. It, it, it was fraud. Yeah. And then, you know, in that particular case, you know, we had private investigators. I remember, you know, we got some very valuable uh, information, the private investigator, um, finally got this woman to talk. They met in a McDonald's of all places. And then we had two of our attorneys sitting in a hotel room once the private investigator warmed her up to do the interview. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and th- like eight of the guys had pled guilty. So we, we did interviews with, with all of the guilty parties, you know, and they told us about payoffs on a racetrack. 
And that's all very interesting and and, and very and very sexy. Yeah, that's that's and what then, you make a movie about, that or the TV right, show. That's what right. you're talking about before. Right. Yeah. And then you have, you know, uh, cases where you're you're arguing about whether there was a jog in the boundary line back in 1812 that was not picked up. <laughs> and that is not necessarily the sexiest thing on earth. Right. But it really is a rigorous intellectual exercise. And believe it or not, we have people on our team that absolutely love it. Yeah. That absolutely love it. And it is, it, it's, it's fun. I mean, would I want, would every single case that I have, I want to be a boundary line? No, I absolutely not. <laughs> I'd probably shoot myself. <laughs> but do yeah. we want to value some of them? Sure. Absolutely. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 some of those boundary line cases, you know, particularly between warring neighbors who are going nuts, you know, if you can calm them down and get it resolved, you can you actually do some good for some homeowners to some people. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know um, you know, because when I first started with Fidelity. Um, I think that was either uh, maybe right around the time that you became co-managing partner of Riker, right? Was that like four years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was right around. Yeah, yeah right around the same time. Because I remember like we had lunch together and we kind of you know got ourselves introduced and acclimated to each other and became best friends like we are. Um, but um, so what was that experience like? Because obviously you know you you put your time in for sure because you've been there since 1989. Um, but was that kind of like a, like a validating moment for you over the course of your career? Or was it just kind of something like, you know, like, Hey, we're just going to keep doing the job like the Marine and you to kind of keep moving forward. Well, was that are you talking about having lunch with you or being named co-managing partner? Uh, lunch with sure. me, obviously. Okay. <laughs> that was the validation. <laughs> co-managing that partner. I didn't need that. Forget about it. Lunch, <laughs> lunch with my cam. cam. I mean, holy crap. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very flattered. And, and, um, I was honored. Yeah. And then you move on right? and you do your job. Exactly. Yeah. Which obviously you continue to do. So one of the things I also thought was interesting was earlier in this conversation, we were talking about like the Marines and you said, if you did your last year first, you probably would have just stuck with that forever. Even looking back now, do you still feel that way? You know, kind of, you know, doing what you've done over the last 32 years at Riker, you know, and knowing what you had, you know, back when you were with the Marines, obviously still a Marine, of course. But um, does that I mean, obviously, you could never think like, hey, oh, I would have done this differently, this differently. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, look, it's it's I look back at that and I, and I say, yeah, should I made a career? I also know that if I did that, I probably would have missed three to four years of my children's life. Right. That that's that's the sacrifice you make. Yeah. But. Um, and I love the people at Riker dancing. They're fantastic. Yeah, I would agree. After you're, after you're in the Corps, you're never going to meet a better caliber of people than, than, than serving the Marine Corps. And yeah. that's, that's just, you know, as far as the professional, the, the, the ethics to accomplish the mission, the professionalism, the duty that's, that's there. And, and, you know, when I got out, you know, one of my roommates who was in the Marine said to me, you know, don't bother to try to explain it to them, meaning civilians. They won't understand. Right. And and, right. and that's true. Yeah. And and it's and it's not just the Marines. It's really obviously, you know, they the few that are the Marines, we have a certain level of arrogance. I don't, you know, that's inbred in us. <laughs> but really anyone in the military, you know, I sort of there's a there's a um we relate. Yeah. Like like two weeks ago, I was playing golf and a gentleman waved me in to play with him. And he was um, a West Point grad in the Army for 11 years. And, and instinctively, we've had things to talk about. Sure, of course. Yeah. You know, that, and that, that that's true with anyone in any branch of the service. Yeah, absolutely. So also kind of maybe looking, you said, you know, you the from the side of the you know, making co-managing partner, then having lunch with me, um, then, you know, you get back to doing the job. So what no, some, I, I think I said having lunch with you and then making co-managing partner. Well, I think I was I took you to lunch after the co-managing <laughs> partner. So I was just going chronologically. Okay. Right. I mean, obviously, right. that, you know, was like, wow, like I'm with Mike Ham, this new title right. insurance sales rep who doesn't right. know anything. He doesn't know a thing about title insurance at that point. I mean, what do I know now? But, um, you know, one of the things that I think is interesting is that, like, you know, you said you get back to doing the job 
And one of the things that I do like to talk about on this show a lot with entrepreneurs, people that are, you know, real estate investors, people that do different things like that, is kind of like looking out into the future, you know? So do you have, are there goals? Are there things that you're still hoping to accomplish over the course of your career, maybe for the firm? Um, if the firm has goals, like what, what are some things maybe you see on the horizon that you're trying to reach and attain? Well, I mean, obviously we want to grow the firm and make it more profitable Yeah, and, and just, just expand because that's, you know, that's where we are today and today. And, and also, you know, leave, leave a good foundation. But one of the things I honestly, I, I, I love about practicing the law is, and you hear a lot of people say it's a business now and it is a business, but it's still a profession. Yeah. We still have rules of ethics. We still, there's still sort of an ethos that you, that you have to put the client first and you have to accomplish his goals. And that's, you know, that's very different from some other professions. And, and I, and I like that because you know, we get new clients all the time yeah. and, and there's new, new, new missions, new, new goals to be met. Sure. And, and it, 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 it never changes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's always different, but it's, it's, it, it's the same. And, and you're, you're just trying to accomplish what your client needs in the best way possible for them so that they can continue on with their business so that they can keep their home. Right. So, so, you know, their mortgage, whatever. So, yeah. So for me, um, you know, the future is almost now it's, it's yeah. every new case we right. get in. Yeah, exactly. It happens. The future happens every day and you're just trying to, you know, serve your clients the best way that you can. Um, so the other question I think I have too is, you know, I'm, a Morristown guy. I mean, I've only lived here now for the last couple of years, but I love Morristown. Uh, you also live in Morristown. Um, the firm is in Morristown. So talk to me maybe about the relationship the firm has. Cause I'm, I mean, I would imagine that Riker is the biggest firm in Morristown. Is that right? That's gotta be right. Yeah, I, I believe or at so. least pretty yeah. close. I mean, cause I know there's right. a couple it, other right. larger firms in, right. in town. It, yeah, in, in the center of Morristown. Sometimes right. those Morris Township guys try to pretend they're Morris yeah, Town. They're not. But they're Mar they're, they're Morris Township. Right. Yeah. Um, There's a space. There's a space. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, you know, we're, we're Morris Town and we pay more in taxes for it. So we can say it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So talk to me, baby, about that relationship that, that the firm has with the community because it's been, I mean, has the firm's been in Morris Town for, I don't even know how long, probably a, a really long time. It's 1985 since 1985 and, right and, and and it's a deep it's a deep relationship yeah, like with the course. jazz we always sponsor the jazz festival um you know we've some of our christmas cards have come from you know the local marstown school children you know underprivileged kids are you know drawing contests um you know you know we've supported you know uh the school you know um on, on a you know on a number of occasions obviously yep. you know you know we're we're a big we're a major business in town, yeah. and you know we take very seriously our our obligations to the town. We've done, you know, um, town cleanups. You know, just 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 to host things. You, right. you, we we do what we're asked, and and some, and some of our attorneys um, seek out and and find opportunities and, and and do more, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which I think is great. I mean, as an aficionado of the town. I think that that obviously Riker is a key part of the whole thing. Like you said, you're a major employer in town. You're right there in headquarters plaza, right off the green, on the green, depending on where you're standing at headquarters plaza. Um, you know, so I, th I think it's fantastic. So, um, all right. So this episode so far has been tremendous. Uh, like I'm really pumped because I've, I've hey. learned, I've learned a lot about you over the course of this last half hour. Um, so what I want to do is move this into our closing segment, which we call Under the Spotlight. So the Spotlighters have listened to Mike Ham and Mike O'Donnell talk for the last 30 minutes about your background, the firm, uh, all these different things, cases. So what would be one thing that you would want them to walk away from this episode with so you are under the spotlight? Well, I think the one thing I'd want them to, to walk away 
about um not about me per se, but but our firm, Riker Danzig. Yeah. Is that we're always trying to approve. We always have our clients' best interests in mind. And we're always involving. And that that we're, you know, that the old way is not good enough, that that we know we have to grow. And we know that that just because you have one litigation path or corporate or corporate path, that doesn't mean you consider all the other avenues that you don't listen to your clients and that, and that, that you can change, yeah. that you can change on a dime and move in a different direction, um, that you be flexible and nimble and that um, we always look for the best lawyers. Yeah. Not, and not only the best lawyers, really the best people. Of course. I, I think that's really um, what I'd like um, your audience to, um, to take away from um, my time with you um, yeah. about my firm. Yeah. And I would, of course, I want to thank you for having me on. Oh, of course. I want you, I want to thank you for coming on. This has been amazing. So if people do want to go learn more about Riker Danzig and Mike O'Donnell, where can they go to learn more? Thank you. Thank you for reminding me for failing to make the pitch, which I should have. <laughs> Specifically, you should, Riker.com is our website. Easy. With regard to my banking and title insurance team, I will tell you we're on a blog. You go on our website. It's, I think it's the real estate title, real estate litigation title insurance banking blog. It's a lot of words. Um, we also run the podcast. I totally forgot that's, to talk about the podcast. That's my that's, bad. That's that's much simpler. Yeah, we call it title nerds. Right, um, and uh, we don't mean to insult anyone in the title industry with that title, but it wasn't original from me. I've heard of the term title nerds since I've been practicing. Oh, we yeah. thought it was. Yeah. No, it was great. And you just had a great guest on, I know, recently. Um, but uh, that was me, in case anybody didn't know what that was. But um, yeah, no, I think it's I think it's great. I mean, people that, uh, you know, because selling title insurance, working in the title insurance field, I think you kind of get pigeonholed to be like, that's, especially here in New Jersey, it's a very old school type of industry, you know, like, I mean, uh, like searchers that we work with are reviewing handwritten documents from 1812 and i'm sure you're doing the same thing but then you have something like this or title nerds or other shows that have kind of come out and doing some different things and thinking outside the box to try to get the message out and talk about things and you know have conversations about all these things that we're that we're doing so when you when i saw that the got the email like title nerds is being launched i was like that's awesome love that and that's my bad for for forgetting to to uh to bring that up but so riker.com is the website you can go on there and i'm sure you can get to all of those things that you just mentioned too right the blog and the, and the podcast absolutely and yeah. there's four or five different other blogs on environmental law and, and other subjects and i two of your friends we we just did a podcast jim maggio with josh greenfield excellent they talk about their experiences yeah jim actually talks about reviewing a map in Morristown by one George Washington. Wow! So I'm gonna have to read. Let's get take take a listen to that one. That's awesome. So we're not gonna we're not gonna win any Academy Awards, but it was a, <laughs> I think it'll be a good session. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, awesome. So I'll make sure I link that in the show notes. So if you do want to go check out Riker, go check out Mike, go check out the podcast or the blog. Um, you can go do that. I will put the morning spotlight.com and the morning spotlight at gmail.com, the website and email address of this show in the show notes as well. If you do want to reach out to us, uh, Mike, again, thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. This was amazing. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. You and, and, we, and, and let me say, we think your blog is great. It, thank you. And, and it was a brilliant move during the pandemic. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That makes me, that makes me feel good. Um, and then the spotlighters, thank you so much for listening today and we will catch you next time. <laughs>